folks, welcome back to Combo Class. Today we're gonna start off with me reading your mind. Then I'll show you how to do the same. I want you to pick any number, not a tiny one, not a single digit number, but any number you want. I want you to take this starting number and add up all the digits. Now take that result of all the added digits and subtract that from your original number. So let's say you wanna pick uh, 624. You add the digits and you're gonna subtract that from your original number. What you're left with is your lucky number, but we need an even luckier number. So you are going to now again, add the digits of your lucky number. And if it's not a single digit yet, add them again and keep adding up the digits of your result until we're down to one number and that is your super special lucky number of the episode. And your super special lucky number is a nine. All right, before I explain all that nonsense, let's do one more mind reading trick. So I want you to pick another number, example one here, got a four, five, one, two. Now what I want you to do is pick another number that is the same number with its digits rearranged in any way. Aaron, what's another number made up of these digits? 2415. 2415. Now what you're gonna do is subtract the smaller from the bigger. And once you get there, we're gonna play our good old adding the digits game. Add the digits of that and add the digits again until we get down to a lucky one digit number. And wait, your lucky one digit number is once again nine. How'd our friend nine get there? Well, let's see. Those tricks relied on multiple different cool things about the number nine. So I'm gonna have to start off with just one fundamental cool property that nines have. Now, when you were learning your times tables back in the day, Someone maybe hopefully taught you a trick when learning how to multiply small numbers by nine that if you fold over one of the fingers of your hand corresponding to which number you want to multiply by nine, you're left with the answer. For example, if I take nine times two, fold down my second finger, I have one, eight. 18. If I take nine times seven, I have six, three, 63. And this property isn't just a fun way to remember nine times small numbers, it also relates to how it turns out that when you take a number that's big enough and you take the digital sum of it, meaning you add all of the digits together, and if you do that enough times down until it's a single digit called the digital root of that original number, if your starting number was a multiple of nine, your digital root is gonna be a nine. What else makes the first trick work? Well, for any starting two digit number, we'll call it X in the tens place and Y in the ones place. What that really means is we have 10 of whatever we wrote in the tens place and one of whatever we wrote in the ones place. And when we took the digital sum of it and added the digits, we were subtracting x plus y, or subtracting one of each. These cancel out, and these leave us with nine of whatever we had for x, which is obviously a, a multiple of nine. Could there be a simple formula written down for this? And when I looked online, all the formulas that describe how to take the digital sum or root of stuff, it's so complex, opaque, and like hard to digest. So I thought, why not make some easier, simpler notation for the time being? I'm just gonna write a digital sum as a one inside a D, meaning once you add the digits of the thing. And I'm gonna use D with an infinity in it to mean digital root, because you keep taking the digital sums until it converges on a single digit number. So using my new notation, I whipped together a formula, and it turned out way simpler and neater looking than I expected. So this formula holds for all integers greater than nine. You take the digital root of n minus the digital sum of n and get nine. 
Now as for that other trick where we rearranged the numbers digits and then found the difference, that one I actually don't really know how to explain as easily as the other one. I read that in a book somewhere and just thought it was pretty cool. So for now what I want to look at is why was it the number 9 that all this came around to? Why was 9 special? Well, it's a square number, it's 3 squared, but that's not related to why this case of 9 is special. It's because 9 is the highest number that in our way of writing numbers you write with a single digit before you come around to 10. And that one that's right under the base that we count in seems to have some pretty cool powers. So since a lot of 9's properties come from it being right under the base that we count in, I don't want to give 9 too much credit. Really all this magic happens for any number that's right under whatever base system you're counting in. And for a quick refresher, when we say we count in base 10, basically 10 is the first number that takes two digits to describe, we go back to one with an extra zero on top of it, and that's why 100 is the first three digit number, and why it's 10 times 10, but theoretically we could count in something like base 12, where we went like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we add a little cool symbol for a 10, and then we had some other little cool symbol for the 11, and then we add our zero, our all-powerful one that can either be seen as nothing or seen as the way of adding digits to stuff. Um, binary, for example, is base two because it only counts in zeros and ones, and two is its reset, like 10 is our reset. In fact, you know, just gotta say real quickly, and I'll save a later episode for this, but base 10 kind of sucks. 10 is not that divisible. We don't want to divide things into fives as often as we want to divide things into threes. We would be a lot better off if we were counting in something like base 12 or even six. So I'll rant about that another day. But you know, instead of having 10 fingers as the reasons why we started counting tens, maybe we should have looked at these little grooves on our fingers. The thumb, our special opposable thumb that only humans have, maybe we should have just stuck with calling it a thumb, not a finger. Said we had four fingers, each are clearly divided into three little sections, and that gives you a great way to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, reset. So I feel like people should have been counting by 12s all along. 12s would be way more efficient, but that's a story for another day. Just in case people switch over to another system of base counting soon, I better take that formula I wrote down earlier and write down a version that would apply to any system of base counting. This will apply for any integer that is greater than base, base minus, minus one. one. B is going to be whatever base you want to count your numbers in. Take the digital root, using whatever base you want, of whatever number you picked, minus the digital sum, using that same base of the number, and you get one under the base you were counting in. So, have fun reading your friends' minds, and before we leave, let me show you one last fun fact about what this 90-ness can do. Back in our base 12 world, why don't we pick a random number? Once again, I like my dice, 225, and if you take any random number and divide it by the same amount of nines, you will always get a repeating decimal with exactly that number infinite times. Me and my cameraman Aaron here saw that it appears that if you take any number, like let's go back to the 225 we did, and divide it by more nines, all it ends up doing is putting zeros in between the repeated strings of numbers. In any case, nines are awesome because numbers one less than whatever you're counting in are awesome. 
and hope everyone enjoyed their weird math lesson. So in conclusion, as long as we're going to be counting in base 10, nines are going to have some pretty cool properties. Like how if you take any number and rearrange the digits, the difference between them is a multiple of nine. Or like that first trick where we took a number, subtracted the sum of the digits, and then summed them and it always became a nine. Or that last thing where you take numbers, divide them by strings of nines, and you get these crazy repeating decimals. So. Nine, oh, well, if we're gonna have to count base 10, I'll give nine some credit. But next up, let's keep our eyes out on this 12 because there's a reason all my clocks have 12 on the top. And I want you guys to keep your eyes out for other things in your life that are counted in 12s. Might be more common than you think. So thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you guys next combo class.